Hello, my name is Jim Mullaney from SciTech Process Solutions. Today is August 23rd, 2019. Today I'm doing a video source inspection on a, a fully remanufactured 4300F spinner wrench dryer. Uh, this uh, video will be uploaded to our YouTube channel uh, and a copy will be sent to the customer for their review and acceptance. Because of that, we do not give their name out on the uh, videos. However, their PO number is 665659. We'll start off on the back of the tool. Um, we back, we have our serial plate back here. This is a um, serial number 4300F. Um, the actual serial number internally is SRD-01198. Manufacturer date 8-2019. And it is set up to be 220, uh, it's 220 volt ready because it is going international. Um, the system is a 4300F because if you buy the system by itself on a tabletop, it's a 2300. When you add the base, it makes the system a 4300F. The customer's purchase order actually says 2300F with an optional line item for the base. We call it a 4300 because that's the real configuration. It also has the uh, PSC 101 digital controller. Again, it's already been set up for 220. Um, what I want to talk about, this uh, wrench dryer is a little bit different than normal because we're not um, washing and cleaning uh, uh, traditional semiconductor uh, substrates, be it silicon, gallium arsenide, and so forth. What the customer want to do is they want to clean thin film frames. So this is a thin film frame holder. This is one of the customer's uh, uh, thin film frames. This rotor was designed specifically to be uh, custom designed for this. A couple things I want to show you on this design is because the uh, thin film frame um, and the DI water act as basically a lubricant the cassette was walking out during the process where the substrates could come out. So we redesigned the rotor. And you see these legs here? They're free falling. They actually uh, are designed, and you'll see it, they move up and hold the cassette in place um, with the centrifugal force of the rotor spinning. And we'll be able to see that when we're watching the, the tool uh, run. Also, this is part of the design of the rotor, so the customer has to be aware. This, ro this cassette, has a little latch, this little spring-loaded latch, see that? This latch can come up during the process, and no, we can't really control that. Uh, if you actually leave it out like that, it normally doesn't, but if you spring it in. So if that latch comes up, I'll show you. It would look like this. As you can see, that latch right there. And then all of a sudden, you can't take the cassette out. We, you push the latch in, and then it's spring-loaded, you push it down, and you can easily remove the cassette. So I want to show you that special design. The cassette should be loaded with the handles uh, on the outside. That'll allow the operator to uh, remove the, um, the cassette if they want to. This system has gone through a complete remanufacturing process, but what I'll do is during the dry process, I'll go ahead and talk about what we do in our, uh, at SciTech here. That way we can get the, the system running and um, um, see how well it runs. So, Simply, a customer loads their, whoops, loads their substrate like that, and all I have to do is hit start. I've got a short rinse cycle, only 30 seconds. You'll see in a second. There we go. So the traditional process is rinse, purge, dry one, dry two, and I'll talk about those processes. So the rinse, obviously, is to uh, uh, re-clean the uh, parts, whatever they may be. In this case, it'll be thin film uh, frames. Then you go to a purge, and what that purge does is it blows any DI water out of the uh, nozzle assembly so it doesn't drip back in. Then we'll go into dry one, which is a traditional high RPM dry. And then uh, we go into a slower uh, uh, dry two, which is low RPM for a, a longer duration. Right now we're in a simple purge. We're going to dry one. I think we have the dry one set up to 1800. This ramps a little bit slower than some of the customer's other tools only because they have a bunch of six inch tools from us already that are F models, but none of them that are, have such a large rotor. Uh, all the other tools they have are 870 S from us already. So we're actually uh, spinning here. Nice and quiet, nice and balanced, as you can see. It's a very nice system. So why we're doing this, I'll go through our remanufacturing process. At SciTech Process Solutions, we can build any and all types of uh, spinner wrench dryers. We don't care of the configuration the customer wants. In this case, it's for a thin film frames. Uh, we break tools down and we reconfigure them up to whatever size needed. Um, we can build uh, systems as small as I'll show you right here. As you can see, we're kind of busy in final test. We have a 240 I'm gonna do a video on. We have a couple eight inch systems here that are gonna be put into their poly 
uh, hopefully in the next couple days, and they'll be in final test. Uh, so we do wafer, uh, the eight inch wafers, two inch, uh, that's actually for four inch substrates, and we have thin film frames. So you can see we have a, a wide variety. In our manufacturing process, what we do is we basically uh, pull the parts needed and we start from the uh, base frame and build the tool up. We build the complete head assembly without any poly and without a controller and in our dry manufacturing area. It goes through a, a QC review of another technician. Uh, if there's any issues, uh, the, the uh, quality control report is given back to the build uh, engineer. They make the changes and then we again, we go through another QC. Once it passes uh, dry QC, it comes into wet test. And again, when it comes into wet test, it's like this. <coughs> As you can see, it's just the head assembly. The poly is not on it. We then hook it up to DI water, check for any little leaks, make sure all the fittings are tight, um, and, uh, and then start running process in here. Once we, uh, the technician feels that it passes the quality control checklist here, we have, an, again, a, a second technician in, in the wet QC that has to qualify the tool for them. Once it's done here, um, we, then it gets put into its configuration. That would be like these systems over here. This is you know, a 240, this is a 4300. Um, so with that, then we go ahead and um, put in the rotors, put in the controllers, put in the amps if necessary, any options that are also included, and we go through our burn-in process. Uh, after 50 process runs with no errors, uh, the, the tool is then uh, released to the uh, sales uh, organization to be able to do a video. So we have about two minutes left on this dry two. I'm trying to see if I can see. It's kind of hard because it's spinning so good, but we know the centrifugal force is working because that cassette was coming out, um, so, which is good. It's a nice design modification we had to make, and that's what SciTech is. As an engineering company, we can make uh, design changes with our machine shop to hopefully uh, um, uh, fix issues with certain type um, custom jobs we do. So uh, that's our reverb manufacturing process. Let's talk about our support process. If you go to our website at SciTechProcess.com, on the left-hand side, you'll see a variety of uh, buttons. The first seven buttons are all semi-tool related. The first three are the tools. We have the S models, which is, looks like this, but with a brushless motor. We have the F models, and we have the traditional STs. Those are the ones you see around the world through a lot of fabs over the last 30 years. The next three buttons are all the spare parts for each category of tool. We have 100% spare parts. On this tool, we can build it brand new. Uh, SciTech also has, which this, this customer did not uh, upgrade to, a state-of-the-art slick device controller that, break, that makes a 10-year-old tool or 20-year-old tool better than any tool you can buy on the remanufactured market in the world. Uh, again, it's called our slick device controller. If you're on our YouTube channel, you just Google SciTech and look for slick device, you'll see a lot of uh, presentations on the value of it, the N2 savings, the maintenance savings. Uh, it, across the board, it's far and away the the uh, best control you can buy for a spin wrench dryer in the world. Um, then we also do other tools. We do uh, mask and wafer scrubbers. That would be the Ultra-T, Ultra-Tech, uh, Ultra uh, K&S type systems. We do quite a lot of the Integra uh, floor wear box washers. We differ, do uh, plasma processes. We do um, the Gasonics tools. We do um, the Branson etchers. We also do high and low um, uh, power microscopes. Okay, we've got five seconds here. At the end of the process, what will happen, as we ramp down and we hit 70 RPM, it's called the rotor stop positioner. It's a, cam, it's a piston that, that shoots out against our cam. It'll roll to the flat on the cam, which will be, we call it home position 12 o'clock, and that will upright the rotor. Once that happens and with the, with the RPMs going down to zero, I'll hear, see as the door is, is to close now, I'll hear the door release, uh, the air release, and I'll be able to open the door. There, okay, the RSP just fired. We're up right now. And there we go, did you hear that noise? Actually, okay, so first thing I like to do is uh, take a look, make sure everything looks good and dry, it looks good. So in this case, as you can see, these things, these, the centrifugal force stop. These things have fallen back into place. I like to take this out. Again, this was a short process, but it's nice and dry and warm. Uh, looks good. As you can see, I didn't have to work with this because it actually did not uh, pop up. Uh, so again, you see how it's spring-loaded? You can see that spring as I push in and out. So if you have it, if it's not spring-loaded, it stays down, which is good, which we want. Let me just put this back in here now. Okay. Make sure we're oriented there. Okay, perfect. 
the bowl looks good. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this was a, um, a, a good quality uh, rinse and dry. Again, this is a faster process than necessary. In our final test area, some customers will run two or three times uh, the length of that um, dry cycle or rinse cycle. For our quality control, we like to do lots of uh, runs because that way we actuate as many of the valves and motors and uh, parts as, as necessary. Going back to our product line, one of the things we also do quite a lot of is photoresist pump repair and sales. So we, we refurbish the IDI, Millipore, Cyborg pumps. We have all the controllers. We have customers that send us on a weekly basis pumps to repair, so we do quite a lot of that. So if you go to our website again at SciTechProcess.com, you can go on, on the search bar, Google for a lot of different stuff, and you'll see different uh, uh, tools we have to offer. So that will conclude this simple video source inspection of a fully remanufactured 4300F spin wrench dryer with a custom motor and to handle that uh, cassette and thin film frames. If there's any questions, you can feel free to call us at 916-797-9000 and ask for anyone in the sales organization. Again, my name is Jim Mullaney from SciTech Process Solutions. Thank you.